evening. Welcome to Southboro Library's event tonight, sponsored by the Economic Development Committee. My name is Claire Reynolds, and I'd like to welcome you to SCORE's Open for Business Open House tonight. SCORE stands for the uh, Service Corps of Retired Executives, and they have recently changed their name to SCORE for the Rest of Your Business. Um, this is a group of volunteers who have years of experience that they can uh, give to the businesses who are interested in growing their business. Or maybe you are interested in starting a business and just don't know what to do. Uh, what's required, what's a business plan, need some help with that or whatever. So we hope tonight you will have your questions. This is our first event and we really don't know what to expect, but stick with us and you will learn a lot, I'm sure. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Kalenda. I'm a member of your Board of Selectmen, as well as part of the Economic Development Committee. Just wanted to welcome everyone here tonight um, and also to, to Jack and Bob from uh, Jack and Bob from uh, SCORE. Um, you know, I think this is a wonder op wonderful opportunity that uh, the EDC is in collaboration with our Board of Selectmen, the EDC, putting together something like this tonight where folks can get together and really collaborate as, as uh, small businesses, ways to learn together, ways to help promote each other's businesses. Um, and, you know, so I, I've been a, a, a long standing proponent of, uh, of our um, a good economic development in town, which is starts with our small businesses. And, um, you know, we can't always rely on uh, the residential taxpayer to, uh, you know, handle the entire burden. You know, that we, you know, we want to see our businesses grow and the more our businesses grow, clearly the better for our businesses and the better for our town. So um, I just wanted to welcome everyone here tonight and really thank everyone for coming. And uh, Jack and Bob, thank you for putting this together. I think there'll be opportunities to speak with you uh, individuals uh, individually, as well as uh, Clara and, and part of our EDC and, um, and, and Mr. Robbins, part of our Economic Development Committee to, you know, review some materials together to help expand and and learn a, you know different different ways of um you know growing our businesses here in southboro so thank you for coming um claire thank you i'd like to thank everybody for attending this is our first session so we really didn't know what to expect uh but look at it this way small group to start off with you get personalized attention. Um, I think my particular interest in this is because I have had my own business for 20 years, and although uh, my work is really at client sites, um, as a small business owner, I can still grow the business. And there's a few questions that I found when I learn that Jack and Bob exist, there's a few questions that I said that they can help me with. So even though you may have had a business for a while, uh, there are still things that you can learn. And for those of you who are thinking of starting a business, had I had some of these resources when I first got started, um, I probably would be on Shark Tank by now. However, that hasn't happened. So I would just also like to quickly introduce Chris Robbins from the EDC, and then we will turn it over to our gentleman from SCORE. Well, it's a privilege to be here and have you with us this evening for this first time event and to have these experts of business and all their experience to lend a helping hand to what you're trying to accomplish. You are a critical component of the entire business community, uh, community and we welcome you and we uh, wish you continued success. Jack. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jack Calkins. I think we have said hi to everyone here. And, and this is Bob Woods. So we're from SCORE. SCORE used to be called Service Corps of Retired Executives. That's what what it stood for. That's back uh, over 50 years ago, actually 1964 it was developed. It started out as an idea where people who were retiring or retired could help those people who were starting out and trying to, with the expertise that they had in order to develop a business. Uh, it's now evolved to there is over 11,000 counselors nationally. In Massachusetts and in Rhode Island, that's a district, uh, and we've got 250 in seven different chapters. The things that we have in common are we liked business, we were good at it, and we liked helping people help themselves. So we spend our time, we're all volunteers, all of us, 
We spend our time trying to help anyone who's in a small business, thinking about starting a small business or trying to start one, f with the benefit of our experience to, to, to grow their business more than they would by themselves. This, with, sm with people in small businesses, it's really difficult to find counsel without paying for it uh, that is, that's independent, objective, and, and that you, know, you get a lot of people who are patting you on the back, you can do it, you get a lot of naysayers maybe, and you get a lot of advice that's not based upon experience. We only care about trying to help people help themselves, and so we, and with the experience that we have, um, we, we've been doing this, I've been doing it for 12 years, uh, Bob's been doing it for 20 years. And before that, we had careers, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. But all, all of it, we, we changed the name SCORE to now be SCORE for the life of your business. Because what we really try to do is to stay with people for as long as they're working at their business and as long as they'd like their help. So I've been seeing some people for five and six years after they're in business on a periodic basis, maybe quarterly or semi-annually, brainstorming, talking with people about the issues that they're dealing with, the problems that they have, the opportunities, whether or not they're developing objectives. And, uh, and so, it's, it, but it's always personal. It's always about the individual. And that's the thing that's most important, um, is that we're trying to help individuals. And it's based upon their personalities, their abilities, their strengths and weaknesses, but within what they want to do, how can they get better at it based upon the experience that we have. So everything we do is confidential. You fill out a one-time form when you come to council, but that's the only thing the government ever knows. Other than that, it's just, it's just us talking, you know, and so uh, you, can, you can feel comfortable in sharing whatever you'd like to with us. The more we know about it, the more, more we can help you. Um, so, um, so I guess that maybe I think, um, uh, and Claire over here has a has our website. We have a very extensive website. It's got it's got you know <laughs> it's got hundreds and hundreds of pages on it. But there's one th feature that's really exceptional, which is there's like 40 different webinars. They're basically like PowerPoint self-administered things for for finance, for marketing, for this. There's so many of them that would be helpful if you just want to poke around and find out um, different. You know, uh, they're usually like a half an hour. And, and, you can, and you can find out all kinds of information that will be very helpful to you. But the real key to our success is the fact that we sit down with people on one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions. And Bob's going to tell you, explain to you, the kind, what you could expect in terms of a counseling session. Thanks, Jack. Uh, I'm just going to add a couple of things to what Jack said. Um, the fact is that, that we, uh, the two of us, are associated with the Boston chapter of SCORE. Uh, we have about 50 counselors, so in terms of working with any of you or any of our clients here, we can always tap uh, their skills and their background, which you can imagine uh, with 50 individuals, it's very wide and, and very extensive. Uh, what can you expect if you come in for a counseling session? Again, these are one-on-ones or perhaps we will co-counsel. We do a lot of co-counseling where two of us work uh, with a client. We find that to be uh, very effective. For instance, uh, Jack and I could be a very effective team because his skill set is different than mine and that, that frequently works very well. Uh, if you want to start a business, if you have an idea, we're going to follow probably a little bit different track than if you're already in business and you have a specific issue or issues. If you have an idea, the first thing we're going to understand is what is this idea? What are your thoughts? How far have you progressed with this? Is this just an idea uh, that's sort of bouncing around in your head, or is it something you've actually put pencil to paper? And we get a whole range of, of people in terms of, of starting a business, and they can fit anywhere uh, along the line. One of the things I like to do sort of early on is get a, get a feel for the background and the experience of the person I'm talking with. Um, as a banker, uh, and as a generalist, uh, I'm, I'm always eager to hear a person's experience particularly related to what they're now interested in doing. Now that doesn't mean that somebody who's starting out in an entirely different field won't be successful, uh, but I know by experience that a person who has, again, experience in a certain field is more likely to su succeed if they continue along those lines. 
Then we sort of proceed from there. The next thing uh, generally is to talk about their product or their service. Uh, how much research have they done? What do they know about the competition? Is this something that doesn't exist in the marketplace? How do they know that there's any demand? Have they done any research to determine that? Any surveys or any other data that they can put together to determine whether there's going to be a demand for their product? And just to decide, a very quick one, uh, a client that I had who uh, was right out of the box, had no experience uh, in the business she was going into uh, on the South Shore, and it was a dog daycare center. So what did she do? She decided the community that she wanted to operate in, and she started doing a survey. She went to all the surrounding communities to find out how many dogs were registered. She then went and looked at the demographics, the income demographics of the community. She then went to all the competitive places in all the communities around her, and then she picked a location, and she's been a huge success. So there was a very good example of a person who did their homework ahead of time in terms of researching the market. Because I can assure you that a success of a small business is based upon market demand and probably the single most uh, reason that they fail is because the entrepreneur has misjudged the demand in the market and has been way overly optimistic. And so we sort of proceed from there again depending on the situation. Uh, the counselors uh, have a vast uh, index of material uh, that's available for uh, our, our clients. Uh, it's, we have access to it. We can print it up, give it to the client, uh, or we can send it by email. And then we sort of round out the session by saying, okay, what are the next steps? It's like your homework. It's like school. Okay, what do you want to accomplish? What do we want to accomplish? in the next three weeks or whatever the time frame is, one, two, three, or whatever it may be. And it's, you know, it's putting a little, putting a little pressure on. And then if feasible, uh, it makes sense, then we make another appointment for them. Now, what's different is when a person comes in with an existing business, they generally uh, have issues. And those issues can be what I call either positive or negative. And the negative can be is the business is in trouble. Hopefully it's not already you know, in, in intensive care because that, that's a tough one. Uh, but other businesses come in who are successful, want to expand, want to talk about how they do it and some of the issues that, that are raised. We also have clients who want to sell their business. That's not, not an infrequent uh, situation. So you sort of pick up on that and depending on how the conversation goes, uh, deal with basically what the client wants to talk about and help them come up uh, with some solutions. I think in my case, uh, I haven't stated it clearly, but uh, my background is in commercial banking. I spent 37 years uh, in, in commercial banking. Uh, my assignments during that period of time were in credit and business lending. Uh, both nationally and, and internationally, so I'm very familiar uh, with that process and enjoy helping clients uh, do business plans, projections, uh, things of that sort. Uh, also, a, a lender in a bank tends to be a generalist in many respects uh, because you have to understand the borrower's marketing, you have to understand its operations, you have to understand its finance, and uh, believe me, most of all, you have to make an assessment of management and their ability to repay uh, alone. So uh, that's how we proceed on the, on the typical uh, client um, visits. And as Jack said, uh, we encourage people to come back. What we really want to establish is a mentoring, uh, long-term relationship, and, and see our clients grow. And that's where we get our reward. That's, that's where it's at. Jack, any more? Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Bob. Um, so, so when, when Bob was talking about all those things, we, we encourage people to come to us long before you're actually going to start spending any money. You know, if you have ideas that you want to bounce around, you know, then we'll, we'll make suggestions, as Bob was explaining, about how you, sh have you have you tried this, have you looked at this, but don't feel like you have to do your homework before you come to us. You, 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 you do what you can, what you're interested in, but then come to us, and then we'll work together in terms of creating 
re creating a roadmap where you can be successful. So, um, so my background was uh, with, with consumer packaged goods marketing. I started out in sales and sales management with Procter & Gamble, then moved uh, into sales management and marketing and marketing management with Playtex Intimate Apparel, and then on to Haynes in the apparel business uh, for marketing management, sales management, and general management. For, for, and for that was like up, up until the year 2000. Then I retired, and about 12 years ago, I started with this, where I've been through chapter chair in Boston and uh, n district director for Massachusetts and Rhode Island and now assistant district director for Massachusetts and Rhode Island. But the main thing I do is counsel. Between, you know, Bob and I have each counseled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. And, and we, we love the fact that we can help people either decide if they want to be in a business or maybe they shouldn't be, you know, if, if, if it's not right for them, if they'll, if we'd hate to see a failure. So we want to we want to try to make sure they can understand what's going to happen to them objectively. And, and then we also want to encourage them in every way to try to think about the ways they can be in. You know, we, we counsel such a wide range. Just, you know, between yesterday and tomorrow, I, I will have seen seven clients. Um, and I started with a, um, um, with a, uh, a CPA who a year ago was having trouble getting, getting enough clients. He was trying too much email and, and mailing and not enough personal uh, uh, contact, and now he's fixed that, and now he's doing well. Matter of fact, he may even merge with another firm. firm. Then there was a computer guy who was a terrific guy, and he is, he's a social guy. He goes to all the meetings, of everyone, but he wasn't doing enough billable hours. So now he's focused on, on doing billable hours because he's got a three-year-old and a six-year-old kid. Um, then then a, an organizer, a woman who's in the organized business, part of NAPO, but she wasn't getting clients because she didn't have any consistent source for it. So now she's working with realtors, and she's going to try with, with, with uh, moving companies, local moving companies, to pe to, for people who are downsizing. Um, a, uh, a, I've, oh, I've had a client for like five years who, who makes the most fantastic breads. She started out in... in uh, just small stores and, and uh, coffee shops and then into farmers markets and now she's moving into, into, into supermarkets getting, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting more formal and probably will have to move out of her house. She's had three people working in her house, now she's going to have to move to a commercial kitchen. So, and that is, the, is great for the long term because that puts her in a position where she, she can then sell her business in, in five or six years. Um, and then after that, it was with a perfume lady, a lady who had perfumes that she developed on her own, limited distribution, but now she has an opportunity to, uh, to actually get some financing to expand that. Um, and tomorrow is a Berkeley graduate, someone who is a recent graduate, who's uh, trying to get in to do commer to mu music for backgrounds and commercials, and then uh, someone with a head lice company. So I guess, you know, the, the thing is that it doesn't matter what the business is. It's a, a whole range of business, but they, they are all basic business principles. We don't have to be an expert in your business to be able to help you. You know, these are all people who have been coming back to me for some period of time, and we keep on brainstorming about what their current issues are, what their problems are, what their opportunities are, what the next step should be, what kind of things they could do. The things that they have in common are they work hard at their business, they open to new ideas, and they're looking to change. One of the biggest things that's the most important thing in business is the willingness and the desire to change what you're doing when, it's, when something else makes sense. There's too many people who are stuck in the mud and they don't change things. And, and uh, one of my favorite expressions, when you're done changing, you're done. And, and uh, in business, that's really true because everything is changing around you. So the opportunity is to, to uh, to look for ways to, to, create, to, to create change in the way that you want to grow your business, whatever that might be. So, um, so anyway, so, so to, to summarize the whole thing is, is uh, you know, we're all volunteers who, only, who spend our time trying to help people help themselves. Everything is personal. Everything is one-to-one -one or sometimes two-to-one, but it's all about the individual and how we can help that person. There's a couple of ways that, there, for, as Bob mentioned, there's the Boston chapter. The Boston chapter is, is the big one, biggest one in, in, uh, in New England. And there's four counselors a day there, so there's 16 counseling slots every day, in, uh, every weekday in Boston. There's also 10 other locations, including Framingham, 
Bob and I both do a lot of counsel at the Metro West uh, Chamber in Framingham. There's a, there's a Westboro, there's a Worcester chapter. They counsel in Westboro and also in Marlboro at uh, Corridor 9 in Westboro and at the Chamber in Marlboro. Uh, most of those are by appointment. But the fact is we're around in all of us. The Worcester chapter is terrific too. All of us want to help anyone who's looking for for one-on-one -on -one personal assistance in terms of building their business. That's what we want to do. Tonight we have we have two ways. If you know there's there's sign up sheets over there where if you if you'd like to sit down with us sometime, you can put an email and put your email down there and Bob and I will Bob or I will contact you. We'll set up a one hour appointment someplace in town. It might be at the library, it might be at the spa but someplace local. We'll work out a, a, an, an arrangement that's, that's comfortable for both of us. The other way, uh, and we've done this in Boston, and I don't know if it'll be appropriate for anyone here, but, but we have, we, we're willing to do like 15 minute speed counseling sessions in the back. Just sit down, have a little one-on-one -on -one talk for like 15 minutes, you know, so the sign-up sheets if someone wants to do that, you know, and we can just go in the back and chat for a little bit, and then you can decide if you want to come back and sign up for a longer session. You know, the, I guess I'd like to close by saying that the, the thing is that unlike at a lot of places, we're not selling anything. You know, it, there's, no, there's no money involved here. What, all we're doing is trying to offer help to those people who would like help to make their business stronger and therefore their life better. So any kind of questions at all, please. No? I guess does anybody have any questions? Well, okay, I'll start off with one. Um, if I was sitting out in the audience and I was thinking of doing a little speed networking, speed networking session this evening with either Jack or Bob, my question would be, um, who should I set the meeting up with? Both of them have khaki pants. Both of them have navy jackets. Absolutely, just to confuse everybody. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that I think it's fair to say that each of you have your particular specialty. Would that be a, a good way to put it? So where Bob has dealt with financial issues, if that is something that you are trying to look at for your business, what type of financing might be available or something along those areas where Jack is more marketing, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, feel free to, okay, help me out here guys, both you know, work with me. Both of us are generalists and, and that's, you know, that was the point of my telling you about the kind of clients that I've, that, that I've, that I've seen over that between yesterday and tomorrow is that, uh, is that any kind of business will do. But if it's a financial issue, that's not my strength. I would send them to Bob. And if Bob has something, uh, something that, that was more marketing oriented, he might send a client that he has to me. And, and that's what we would also, we have people who do operations and other, other, uh, other parts of the, that are part of the chapter. And even, even the Westboro chapter, or the, the uh, Westboro branch of the Worcester chapter, we, we don't, it, there's, no, there's no way to keep in score here. Right, you know, no, on no, no one's working on commission. All we're trying to do, is to offer us as much assistance as anyone needs and is and wants to take. Yeah, I just reiterate what Jack is saying. I mean, again, all of us I think are, are in the chapter actually are capable of dealing with a client the first time around, because most of us have some general business experience uh, that's going to get us through that session. I've been doing this for again, as Jack said, for 20 years, and it's very rare that I get stumped right off the bat by a client coming in. Sure, there's a client who comes in and says, well, I just uh, invented a widget and I need a patent. Well, that, that kind of thing probably throws me, but there are not too many first situations like that. And as Jack said, uh, very frequently, I pass a client to him because the issue is a consumer marketing issue where my background is in wholesale or corporate banking, and they're very, very different businesses. Super, so if you have any questions on that, be sure to uh, bring them up. My last thing that I would like to bring up is just uh, kind of a little scenario of how uh, this would work. Um, I've had my own business for 20 years, and um, I just fell into it completely by luck. Um, and everything has been going along fine. However, 
I still have a question that I would like to ask of these gentlemen because it's something that I know is holding me back. And to be quite frank, and I'm the first one to admit when I'm not doing something correctly, I know I'm not doing it correctly, and I kind of need something to give me that push over the edge. Um, so here's a typical, I think, what would be a typical scenario for somebody who is in business and who says, um, okay, so how can I use these guys? I've been in business for 10 years, 20 years. Things are going along good. Um, what, what can I get from SCORE services? So my question is, and it relates directly to my business, um, I have a service that I offer to businesses that just about every business can use because everybody uses business applications and PC applications. And I, I'm not doing a sales pitch, so I'm not gonna go any further than that. My question is, I think that there is a tremendous market here um, to do old, good old fashioned cold calling for businesses because I know these businesses use my service. Um, I think a lot of people are very shy about doing something like cold calling. It kind of takes uh, a little bit of, it takes the realization that you are going to be rejected. Okay, I can deal with that. Um, it also takes, um, you know, kind of a door-to-door -door type of thing. But my question is, is how can I, and I don't want to put you on the spot. This is just a typical kind of situation. Um, how do you recommend that somebody does cold calling, and I, I have a good pitch, so it's not that, without making it look like you are begging for business? I think that's a kind of a good way to put it. Without, without, without lots of specifics, my first suggestion would be rather than trying to sell, you go in and you're trying to find out about their business. In other words, it, it's when you have a when someone comes to you and says, "Here, you ought to take this," you know that's a cookie cutter approach. When when I used to tell people when I had a sales force, when you had sample, don't ever bring samples. And you go in and talk to the people about their business. How is your business? How's it going? How is this category? You can take a look and see what there's. So in this case, it would be to probe to find out how the business is doing, what their issues are, whether or not you know you said that you that everyone needs your product some businesses needed more than others so so it is difficult to do cold calling however if you find out that the business has any the other part of it is that before you can do business with something there's there's really a hierarchy it's like duct tape marketing first you have to know someone then you have to like someone then you have to trust someone there's a there's a, a there's an, a, an order there you don't walk in and in normally and and just go and say in in Here's something, and somebody says, okay, I trust you, I buy it. There's got to be a development of a relationship with that. And, and I guess the final thing is that as the best way to, to, to go from that know, know someone to trust someone is to get referrals. And the best referrals are when someone actually calls a friend and says, I'm sending Claire Reynolds over to see you because she's got this, and it really is. So then all of a sudden, the person coming in is saying like, oh, well, Harry sends, says she's good. So, so now he's open to, be, to discussing whatever it is that, you're, that you want to talk about. So it's, it's an involvement of trust in order to get to the point. And, and finding out whether the person really needs the, the thing that you're trying to sell as well. I mean, some people may not need it, in which case you shouldn't sell it to them. But if they do need it, now you're doing them a service by selling it to them. Thank you. Um, that's really good. And if you think about it, when you're, ta um, when you're thinking of hiring a contractor or you're thinking of um, going, you know, choosing a daycare center, whatever it is, what do you really depend on? Referrals. Exactly. I I just wanted to, is this working? I just wanted to second this notion about referrals. I've, I've been in sales and marketing most of my life, but people have asked me, and I, I have to remind myself, your best place to start is with your past and current customers who value you 
and trust you and are in a place to give referrals and actually going back to them and asking for those referrals and support or input on how you can either improve your service or what added value dimension of your product or service is going to make a difference in the marketplace. So there, there's the foundation. The, the people who love you, respect you, is, I think, the best place to start. Did you want to speak? No. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So with that, I think that for those people who would like to schedule some time, um, there are two uh, agendas, so to speak, two schedules over there. If you would like to schedule a time for a 15-minute session tonight with either Jack or Bob, uh, feel free to do that. Um, if you would, for those of you, if um, there's a waiting period, um, I will be glad to uh, show you the resources that are available to you through the score.org website um, for things such as business plans, webinars, self-paced training. Um, it is always updated. There's a lot of things that you can take a, a look at um, as uh, resources. And if anybody has any questions, I would be glad to entertain them right now. Um, I would also like to thank everybody for coming. I hope this is the first of um, moving this along um, because I think it's a, a resource here that we can all learn uh, from. Um, so. For those who want to sign up, please go ahead and um, do that. There are also pamphlets up here for anybody if you would like to take one and pass them on. And then I um, would really like to, as people are speaking with the SCORE gentleman, I think um, it would be really great uh, to have everybody introduce themselves to each other so we can learn what other businesses are. I just want to add, there is a, okay. there's a website for, for SCORE as well. It's, yeah. it's score.southboro at gmail. It's on the back of those brochures. So if at any time, you know, you don't have to sign up now. If at any time you want to do it, you just email that. That's the email address. It'll come to Bob and myself, and we'll and we'll set up something with you. Um, and actually, we have unknown to me, but this is great. Um, we have Desiree um, Alsabikian who has actually used Score. So what better uh, reference then uh, to have somebody who has already used them. If you do have to leave because of time constraints, if I could just ask you to um, sign your name before you leave just so that we know who is here and then we can reach out to you for further um, events. Sure. Um, thanks, Claire. Yeah, my name's Desiree Asselbeke, and I'm a small business owner. I own a retail boutique. Um, I initially, uh, the reason why I came here tonight, I've been in business for five years, and I had initially, when starting my business, sought out um, assistance from the SCORE program in the Worcester chapter. Um, and through my work, I was able to develop um, a, a real top-notch um, business plan with five and 10 year financial projections. Um, the bank told me that because of that, that was why they were securing a loan for me um, because it was in the absolute perfect form. Um, so that was definitely something that was a resource to me from the SCORE folks. Um, also too, over the years, um, just getting marketing information um, and just having general resources that you can talk to in the community about your business, about how to promote your business and how to become successful. Um, this is really a huge community asset for the business community, not just in Southboro, but again, as, as the representatives have said, all, all throughout um, the country, <laughs> really. Um, so I would highly, it worked for me, and I have a very specialized um, business, so it worked for me, and, and I would encourage anyone who's thinking about it, even if you have a crazy thought in your head, to, to, to seek advice and counsel um, is, is just wonderful. So thank you very much for coming tonight. <laughs> All right. Just, just very informal. Just you know, All right. Yeah, I'm Sapna. Um, I, I've been having so many different ideas in my head. I haven't really nailed down anything yet. But I read about this in the Southboro newspaper, and I just thought I should come in and check what SCORE is all about. So I'm here to just learn uh, from people. That's it. Thank you for organizing this.
Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ben Roberts. I, um, I just opened my shop in March. We're on uh, Boston Road. It's a um, retail boutique. I don't know what you're into, but I'm, I'm curious. Um, and then we also have a classroom. Uh, so we do CPR and women's defense classes, uh, anti-kidnapping for little kids, um, things like that. Um, and uh, we're evolving every day. So I, I, I look forward to meeting with the scores uh, gentlemen and uh, figuring all that out. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave McLaughlin, and uh, I opened Max Wraps downtown Southboro, and uh, and I'm looking to um, sell some sandwiches. And I came here tonight because Chris here uh, stopped by and told me that this was happening. So here I am. Hi, um, I'm Rose Morrow. Um, I'm actually here because um, I have a brother that I've worked with on a lot of uh, business projects, and um, he's an artist, and he's um, thinking of branching out from his, you know, he's currently employed, but thinking of starting his own uh, his own business, which would be um, stained glass art and restoration. So, And um, I'm trying to convince him that Southboro would be a great place for him to do some marketing. <laughs> so. My name is Diane Root, and I uh, run Solomon Sire Ventures, which is a um, preschool program that focuses on character building and social emotional learning types of topics. Um, I do this part time, pretty much, while I'm also managing family, and um, I've done a lot of. Um, one-off events and I do author visits because I've actually written a children's picture book which is part of the uh, program that I do but I'm really here because I kind of want to see about taking my business to the next level and looking at some um, more formalized programs and a way to get more predictable income out of my business based on what I'm doing so um, I'm hoping to make more connections along those lines. Well, I would like to thank Terry for her work tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we didn't know that this was going to be televised, but it's delighted. And we hope that um, for residents who have missed tonight, if we reached out to you and you weren't able to come, um, I think that with the attendance that we had for the first night here, um, while not um, a huge percentage of the DBAs in town, it was a great start. And it looks like it's something that there is a need for in town. So stay tuned for um, more um, information and uh, possibly another event such as this. So thanks all for joining us tonight.